Good morning, students. Welcome to a new episode of Biodimension Online Classes. And today, in this class, we are going to discuss entry of other monosaccharide, that means except glucose. What is the process of entry of other monosaccharides into glycolysis? And we are also going to discuss lactose intolerance, the galactose toxicity. And I have a question for you that is, whether fructose consumption is harmful for health. So, I am Dr. Mohinak Bukhapadhyay and this is Biodimension Online class. And in this class, we are going to discuss several topics of biotechnology, microbiology, molecular biology, genetics, biochemistry and related subjects. So, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because in this video, we are going to discuss several different things that you generally do not know or you generally do not study in your normal classes. So let's start our today's class. And uh, as I have already told you that in this lecture, we are going to divide this lecture in uh, four parts. First one is entry of fructose into glycolysis. Second one, is fructose consumption really harmful? Third one is entry of galactose into glycolysis. And fourth one is lactose intolerance. And after that, we are going to discuss some other different topics also. Let's see. So, fructose is converted into glycolytic intermediates. Yes, fructose. Fructose is a very important intermediate because we are, we are having in terms of sugar, that is basically sucrose. So, sucrose is a disaccharide. That means uh, it is composed of two sugar. One is glucose, another is fructose. So, fructose. So, when sucrose degrades in our body, or metabolized in our body, the enzyme which is responsible for the degradation of sucrose is what? That is the question for you. Which enzyme is responsible for the degradation of sucrose? Okay, that is the question for you. And if you have the answer, please write it in the chat box. So now, uh, after degradation of sucrose, it will convert it into glucose and fructose. Glucose will directly enter into glycolysis, but in case of fructose, it will go to the liver. So in the liver, majority of the fructose conversion or uh, fructose conversion into glycolytic intermediate happens in liver. So in the liver, fructose is basically converted into fructose 1-phosphate and followed by it is it is actually getting degraded by reverse aldol condensation and form glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So, this first step, that is the conversion of fructose to fructose 1-phosphate, is, is actually uh, catalyzed by the enzyme which is known as fructokinase. By similarly, the enzyme glucokinase or hexokinase, this fructokinase will also utilize ADP to ATP. Sorry, ATP to ADP. Okay? So, utilizing ADP, the fructokinase converts fructose to fructose 1-phosphate. Right? Now, this fructose 1-phosphate is a 6-carbon component. So, this is the structure of fructose and in, in, in case of fructose 1-phosphate, this alcohol group is converted to uh, replaced by the phosphate. So, takes the fructose to fructose 1-phosphate. So, now fructose 1-phosphate is a 6-carbon uh, sugar and it can easily be cleaved by the enzyme that is uh, fructose 1-phosphate aldolase. If it is cleaved by fructose 1-phosphate aldolase, it is cleaved after first 3 carbon that means in, in, in this particular position. So, it will produce dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde. So, this glyceraldehyde, again, using the enzyme triose kinase, it will convert it into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So, if you are looking at this particular process energetically, yes, energetically, this process doesn't have any difference because both uh, it, it also uses two ATP. Just like if glucose enters into glycolysis, it also uh, utilizes two ATP in its preparatory stage. So the fructose also utilizes two ATP in its preparatory stage. But why this process is uh, not that much useful? But we can say that this excessive consumption of fructose can lead to the pathological conditions. So in this, uh, by using the word pathological condition, we actually want to say that yes, by if you if if somebody if somebody uh, consume fructose in an uncontrolled manner, in an uncontrolled manner. So in that particular case, 
that person is the basically the thing which is happen is that uh, that leads to obesity fatty liver insulin insensitivity etc so why these things actually happens so the thing is that fruct in case of glucose conversion there is one checkpoint so what is the checkpoint the checkpoint is the enzyme phosphofructokinase okay but in case but that means if we doesn't require any more energy phosphofructokinase will be inhibited and that uh, will be inhibited by the atp and it will not produce energy anymore and the glucose will convert it into other components okay fine mainly in glycogen but in case of fructose if we if we consume fructose in terms of high sugar rich beverages and etc in that case in that case that 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 fructose is not going to be inhibited by this particular phosphofructokinase inhibitor system because phosphofructokinase is basic actually able to inhibit the step between fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1 6 bis phosphate but here the uh, component is fructose 1 phosphate so phosphofructokinase inhibitory system will not able to work or checkpoint is not able to work in this particular case so the resulting uh, thing which will happen that is a uh, obesity insulin insensitivity uh, fatty liver and followed by several other complications why because component excess glycolytic components will convert it into what will convert it into fatty acids okay so the thing is that that is why excess consumption of fructose is harmful but now i have a question for you here i am talking about excess consumption of fructose now fruits mainly contain fructose so in that case excess consumption of fruit is also harmful okay partially it is true but the thing is that if we talk about fruits fruits not only contain sweeteners it also contain a huge amount of fiber those fibers are important for our body for our daily life so in that case no in my answer is no consumption of fruit is not that much uh, harmful if we are not not taking that fruit fruit in a unregulated manner okay consumption of anything in unregulated condition is harmful for our body right so now we are coming to the uh, next coming to our next monosaccharide that is galactose galactose is the main main component of another disaccharide that name is the name is lactose lactose is made up of glucose plus galactose so in our body we have an enzyme that is lactase so lactase actually able to cleave lactose into glucose plus galactose so again glucose can go directly into the glycolytic pathway but in case of galactose that they, they need some extra steps so the steps involved the first step is the galactose converted to galactose 1 phosphate using the enzyme galactokinase here also one molecule of atp is being utilized for the conversion of galactose to galactose 1 phosphate so this is the first step so enzyme the enzyme is galactokinase fine now the galactose 1 phosphate then uses the uridyl glucose that means uridyl diphosphate glucose which is an activated intermediate and we are going to see the main role of this udp glucose in when we are going to discuss the glycogen synthesis part because udp glucose have a huge role in the process of glycogen metabolism mainly the anabolism of glycogen that means the glycogen synthesis so that galactose one phosphate uses that udp glucose thing and it it actually replace it actually shuffle the uh, udp glucose is con converted into udp galactose and galactose one phosphate is transferred into glucose one phosphate basically the thing is that glucose and galactose interchange its position and that glucose one phosphate and galactose one phosphate converted into glucose one phosphate okay so then udp galactose in again converted to udp glucose by using an epimerase enzyme so what is the meaning of epimer basically if we are look at the structure of glucose and galactose they are epimer of each other so the enzyme is epimerase the function of epimerase is that it will convert or it will convert the udp glu galactose into udp glucose again 
again that you will be glucose will uh, convert we or will 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 helps to convert one galactose one phosphate into glucose one phosphate okay so this is the this is the process so then then this glucose one phosphate using the enzyme phosphoglucomutase i have already told you that do if if you are not uh, know what we do don't know what is the function of uh, glucose enzyme you please go through our my, my previous videos based on the glycolysis and all and this phosphoglucomutase actually helps to convert glucose one phosphate into glucose six phosphate now once we get glucose six phosphate the normal glycolysis process can goes on without any problem okay so this is the in this way so this is a, a, a kind of a three to four step process first one is uh, uh, the first one is galactose to galactose one phosphate catalyzed by galactokinase second one is galactose one phosphate to uh, glucose one phosphate and in this case utp glucose takes a major role and convert it into utp galactose that utp galactose again converted into utp glucose by using the enzyme known as utp galactose 4 epimerase right so then this glucose one phosphate then converted into glucose 6 phosphate by using the enzyme phosphoglucomutase okay fine and then uh, then this uh, glucose one phosphate will enter into the glycolysis without any problem or without any hamper but in this particular case excess utilization of milk is not going to lead the development of fatty liver or something else because here the glucose finally the product is glucose 6 phosphate that means uh, whatever uh, galactose is there the galactose is uh, being converted into glucose 6 phosphate and then that then it enters into glycolysis so in this particular case what will happen is that the regulation of phosphoglucokinase will be intact so the, so in this particular case there is no chance of producing excess amount of glycolytic intermediate followed by the production of acetyl coa and followed by the production of fatty acid so in this in this case the regulation will be perfect and it will not it will it will excess uh, excess um, glucose 6 phosphate is being converted into glycogen so now we comes into uh, uh, another uh, term that is lactose intolerance as we all know lactose is a very important component of milk and that is why uh, the babies are basically habituated to uh, milk because that is their main diet okay but in the adult person our body have less dependency on milk that is why the lactose intolerance things come Lacto in in in, in uh, newborn child also if the newborn child doesn't have the lactase enzyme then also they can face the lactose intolerance intolerance thing so lactose intolerance can happen to a newborn child also as well as an adult person also in case of adult person their lactase enzyme production will decrease but in case of newborn child the lactose enzyme will not produce at all for them or partially produce so that in that case what happens that the major role of lactase enzyme to convert a glucose a lactose into galactose and glucose so it's a dehydrogen it's a sorry it's a, it's a hydrolase enzyme because it you use water for the cleavage of the bond so what is the question the question is what happened to the lactose in the intestine of a lactase deficient person that is the question for you all to find out okay so now galactose is highly toxic if it if the transferase is missing okay so what is the transferase so the transferase is galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase if the transferase activity is missing the galactose one phosphate is not going to transfer into glucose one phosphate so in that case galactose one phosphate will accumulate in the body so and our body is going to convert that galactose into galaxitol okay so that is the alcoholic component of galactose by using the enzyme aldose reductase and in the in this particular process an nadph is converted into one nadp so that particular galaxitol is actually uh, deposited in the lens of the eye and it develops cataract fine so that is why uh, i have all, I, I have used the term that galactose is highly toxic if the transfer is 
part of the enzyme is missing. Fine. So uh, this is it for today. I believe you like the video and you are able to learn several new things. If you really like this video, share this video with your friends. And if you have not yet subscribed the channel, please subscribe the channel, Biodiamonds and Online Class, and also press the bell icon so that whenever I'm going to uh, give a video twice a week, you will instantly get the notification in your mobile. So thank you so much for today's class. See you on the next class.